stuff on my thing. Um, you know, I only, I only drank coffee really once in my life. I mean, steadily. Every once in a while. This coffee, my wife made some coffee this morning. I'm not really a coffee drinker, so I added a whole bunch of hot chocolate, you know, mixing in, and that was chocolate and coffee. Anyway, only time I really uh, dealt with coffee was when I was in the Air Force. When I, you know, when I went into the Air Force, I uh, went to, after basic training, then you had to, went to I was in Lackland, then I went to Shepard. They had to be there for a while, but while they, they give you your, your, your uh, well, they already said, well, you, in basic training, they always said what your, what your, what you call AFSC was, your job, was your task, and the Air Force was going to be, mine was supposed to be, a, basically I was a flying nurse, you know what I mean? I was a nurse, I was supposed to be a nurse. So anyway, so while we're waiting for our, our orders to come through, you know, since you've been designated, wait for your orders, they got to cut the orders, wait for it to come through. And I was up there at Shepherd, and uh, you know, it was a big, like, I won't say barracks, it's almost like a hotel. It's like huge, it's a huge thing. And, um, and so somehow I was chosen, what well, chosen? I was given the task, because I was waiting for my orders to come through, of uh, being like, almost like a, the night manager for a hotel. You know, I had to wear my class A's, you know, blue and tie and all that stuff. I hate ties, I don't wear ties. Bad racial memories. Okay, anyway, it's like I got five nights since I get that. Some other time we'll talk about that. So anyway, so I, uh, uh, so I mean, I was really good looking. I mean, when I, I mean, in, in a suit, and whatever, I did, distinguished, or whatever have you. You know, so people come in. You know, if, you know, troops coming from all over the place. Usually, uh, well, they're they're new recruits. You know, well, just out of basic training. And so I had to get them in rooms. You know, the whole administrative thing. But because it was a twelve-hour shift, it was basic from from twelve midnight to twelve uh, noon. So, so I drank. They had coffee there. I drank coffee to make sure I, you know, because it's the military. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just bunk off. You know, oh, a night shift, blah blah. No, you have to always be on. It. Anybody can walk in at any time. Which reminds me, it seems as though the, I think. Remember, I was. This was back in the in the sixties. This is the draft time when you was drafted. When you know you had to go. You know, you was constricted. This day and age, I hate to say it, I really don't like this. I'm not into war, not into whatever have you, but because we have no discipline in society, I actually think that they should reinstitute the draft and people should just be drafted for the two years, four years, or whatever, whatever, the, whatever the deal is. I think it should be four years, but we won't get into that right now. Uh, because, you know, it, it, it teaches you discipline. When, if I had discipline anyway because I grew up in a cadet corps, but, but, it, but it teaches other people discipline. See, it's no good for you to have discipline and nobody else around you has discipline. It doesn't work that way. They don't know what you're talking about, you know? A lot of times, they, 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 I think something very simple, very simple. I'm sorry to go off, but I have to go off on this. Uh, you know, you know, kids around here, they smoke or whatever have you. So when they're in my yard or whatever have you, and I find a cigarette, but I give them all that, I said, look, Problem is, you ain't been in the military. There's a thing called field stripping. You know, when you're smoking a cigarette, say you're in enemy, enemy territories. First of all, you're smoking a cigarette they don't have, so therefore they'll know that you're there. But forget all that stuff. But if you are someplace, what you do a field strip is basically you take the butt if you have a cigarette has a butt, and you and you get the rest of the tobacco on, sort of shove it around, bury it, right, whatever. Then you take that butt and put it in your pocket. So when you get to a proper receptacle, that's when you put it in. Simple. It's a simple, disciplined thing. Once you start doing it, you you know. Whatever. But because they have no discipline, a lot of them, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of kids here is damaged. People think the United States has a problem with, with, with their young people. A lot of kids here are damaged because though the fathers might be around, uncles might be around, they don't pay any attention to these kids. They really don't. Young people around here are on their own. I'm telling you, people, believe it or not, you know, yeah, you'll get some, oh, yeah, we have family structure. No, there's a lot of, there's families that actually disown, disown, but kick people out because they, they were some, some criminal matter, and they, they're shunned from the family. So there's a lot of dynamics that's happening, just not in this culture, but other cultures. But back to this point. 
I had to get my experience in the military, have some discipline, you know, get some camaraderie, blah, 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 blah. You weed out, you know, people. I don't know, I don't, oh man, I don't know how to do that. All I'm trying to say, we have to have some place where you go from your family setting to some discipline. Program. That's why sports are so popular. What happens? They get into a sports situation and they have structure of the men, da 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 da, or the women, da 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 da. So you get another whole level of discipline that you didn't get at home, possibly because your parents didn't know how to raise you, or there's just too much problems. Okay. But here's the thing about the military. And I don't think the people, I don't, I don't buy people, every time they start a war, they say, oh, the budget, the budget, the budget. But think of it this. Think of it like this. Say, where's my little thing? Say this is a little bomb, tiny bomb, okay? It's a bomb. You know, you wrap it in whatever, they, they wrap it in, whatever have you. It's explosive, right? This little bit of thing. Now, remember, your rockets are really this big. So, if they say this rocket, now I'm going to make it up. Say this, the newest rocket. But for them to get it this small, to get it so where they can do something like that, this rocket now cause, or this, this bomb, whatever it is, it costs a million dollars to make. Now, you say, okay, it's a million dollars for your armaments, blah, blah, blah. So all these, you got all these million dollar rockets running around to, to shoot off at the, the enemy. Okay, here's the problem. Okay, so you got to shoot that million dollars, millions, millions, millions of dollars worth of, 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 of rockets off at the enemy. But before you get there, you have to practice. They practice a lot, call maneuvers, you know, or, you know, whatever they call it, exercise, whatever it is. So, so I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just like it's like boxing, you know. You, you you're in boxing ring for maybe 15 rounds, whatever, or maybe three rounds, maybe one round. But all that time you had to uh, spar and, and and prepare for the boxing match, you probably been hit more times in the preparation than you have in the actual match. What I'm trying to say is that for every bomb that actually goes off in a war situation, there's got to be at least 5, 10, 15, 29 bombs that they, you know, practice on. So that means that's, that's, that, that's that much money that's going out. So wars, except for the people making the armaments, whatever, whatever are just not tenable. It's just, and not right now they, they're threatening to go to Venezuela. Stupid move. Can I just say one thing? I'm, I'm sorry I'm going off, but this is interesting. When, you know, when we had 9-11, you know, I was actually right down there because I was working for Democracy Now! at the time. It's right in the same area, you know what I mean? I, I heard a plane go over to the, the whole thing. Don't worry about it. I was there. Let's put it that way. And, 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 and afterwards, to, to get back to work, and it, was, it, was, it was an interesting situation. Glad I was in New York. I'm a New Yorker, so I know how to get maneuver, you know, because they had all the streets closed off, like uh, all across, say, 42nd Street closed. You know, if you didn't live below, off uh, Houston Street closed, uh, uh, Canal Street closed. Those are the streets that go straight across the bottom of Manhattan, right? So I had to make my way through subways and then in various ways to get back to the firehouse where Marcus and I was, so I, you know, it's not going to Anyway. But here's the, here's the thing. With this war, they're trying to do this war in Venezuela, I guess. You know what I mean? Because, you know, uh, the, 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 the Chinese and the, and the Russians got this whole thing happening in Europe where, you know, Europe is not going for this, you know, this oil thing. Saudi Arabia's cut down on the oil. You know, the, the whole, whatever, fracking is, is dead in the United States. They realize it's not a good money-making venture. So all that stuff is done. So they need more oil. And where are they going to do oil from? They figure, hey, Venezuela's right there. It's in our backyard. Hey, what can we do? We don't need the Saudis anymore. In fact, Venezuela has more, more oil and Saudis and, and 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 even Nigeria, we don't need that. You see, if we get them, then we get we. That, 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 you see how that works? Okay. So of course they want to do something with that, but you know, and everything's all falsified. We don't you know how they you know how they do it, right? But here's the problem: they're so-called allies in the area because you, now you're not in Europe, you're not over there in Ukraine or whatever, have you? With, with your, your regular European buddies, this is some other people. Yeah, these are some these are some white 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 Latinos, blancos, if you will, you know, trying to mess up, do do stuff against the indigenous and the rest of stuff. But it's not going to work. I'm going to tell you why it's not going to work. Because remember that the government that's just down in Brazil, who's supposed to be one of their partners, he's a right wing, whatever, whatever, military kind of guy. But the people, the populace, hmm, problem with that. You have Colombia, uh, Colombia and Venezuela, uh, the border, border right there. Well, that's not going to happen either, okay? First of all, people forget the Venezuelans can fight. <laughs> And they have something to fight for. So, and those are a lot, a lot of hills and mountains and blah, 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 blah. So, on that front, they're not going to have to be successful. Remember, now remember that China, as, as well as Russia, has, has interests in Venezuela right now, right? So, you, so you're going to have the military, U.S. military going in that region, and they're going to, it's going to be a mess. Now, how does this happen? Now, I'm saying all this, but how does, what does this have to do with, with ADOS? Very simple. I'm not into war. I'm a peace all the way, you know, with the uh, 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 Star, Star, Star Trek thing, you know, 
prosperity, peace, prosperity, whatever the head is. I'm that kind of guy, right? I believe ADOS will keep on making out demands. How are you going to pay? How are you, going to, you don't have to say how you're going to pay. We'll say that this is the debt you owe. Pay the, pay the debt. You can't, you can't get any more debts until you pay this debt. So if, you, if going into war gives you a debt, you can't do that. It's as simple as that. You don't have to say that. It's just implied, right? You know, I, 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 so anyway, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is if all these forces, the so-called peace forces, and the, you can march for peace if you want. That ain't going to work. But if you deal with reparations, right, that automatically is going to force them to be doing something, right? So that's what I'm looking at. ADL was, and remember, if ADL was supported worldwide, all these other, you know, and let's call them, if I, you say indigenous, I say autochthonous. Autochthonous just means that you can prove that you come from that space, that land. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a geolog it's geological term. It's autochthonous means that, right, you can trace where it comes from. There's so all the autochthonous people around the world. Say, yeah, we agree with ADOS. Give them their reparations. Everybody's supportive with that. They got to pay attention to that. I know, so you're trying to put this together in your brain. You will. I'll give you time because we got some time. A little bit of time. We got some time. Glad I got through that. I being T, that's me, from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Drink a cup, of, drink a coffee. I don't think it's Colombian coffee, but it's coffee. In that region down where Venezuela and Colombia well, from a death from the ADOS descended of chattel slavery that's us American descendants of chattel slavery <laughs>